So we just talked about the uh, rather difficult concept of domain. So we need to look at a number of examples here. Because this is something which is rather tricky. I'm on page 90 in section 1.3 looking at problem 24. Here our function is 1 over x plus 9. Now to find the domain, our task is to think about, is it possible for us to take square roots of negative numbers, to have a square root of a negative, or divide by 0? Well, I don't see any square roots here. So, and there aren't any. So there's no way we can take a square root of a negative. But I do see a denominator here. And if that denominator can be zero, we're in trouble. So we could have a denominator x plus nine equaling zero which is what we don't want. We don't want x plus 9 being 0. What we do want is for x plus 9 to not be 0. Well, if we subtract 9 from both sides, that means x cannot be minus 9. And that right there is the domain of this function. So long as x is not minus 9, you're not going to do anything bad, and you will get an output, a number for an output. In interval notation, it's a bit complicated, because we have to write this as all the numbers, x could be a number less than negative 9, or x could be a number greater than negative 9. But you don't have to write it that way. It's perfectly all right to write this as x does not equal minus 9. All right, so let's look at 26. Here we have h of x. That's all right, it's just a different letter, a different name for this function. We have x minus 3 over x squared minus 4. So we need to, again, find the domain of this function. Well, no square roots. So I'm never going to be taking the square root of a negative number. Don't have to worry about that. But I do have a denominator. And that denominator could be 0 which is exactly what I do not want. So, what I want is for x squared minus 4 to not equal 0. So, if I added 4 to both sides, If I took square roots of both sides, and of course taking square roots means adding plus or minus to one side of the equation, and square root of 4 is 2. So this tells me x can't be plus or minus 2. So long as x is not plus or minus 2, everything's going to work out in this function. I plug in that value of x, I'll get a number out, so long as x is not 2 or minus 2. This is perfectly acceptable, and interval notation in this case is even worse. So be thankful you don't have to write your answers in interval notation. 
the three regions we have to worry about, we could be less than negative 2, we could have an x value between minus 2 and 2, or we can have an x value greater than 2, which corresponds to this third interval here. Or you can write it real simply like that. Okay. Let's look at 28. Back to our old friend f of x. And this time we've got a double thread. We've got denominators and we've got square roots. x over the square root of 2 minus x. So we could have the denominator be 0. Or we could have what's inside the square root be negative. So what we want, we want to avoid both of these things. We want square root of 2 minus x to not be equal to 0, and we want 2 minus x to be greater than or equal to 0. We don't want anything bad to happen. You know, we don't want this and we don't want that. That's, that'll be important a little bit later on. Here, if I solve this, I could square both sides. And squaring 0 is just 0. I could add x to both sides. And then writing it in a more familiar way, I have that x can't be 2. OK, got it. 2 can't be an x value, because that's going to do bad things. What about here? Well, again, if I add x, oops, not 0, adding x to 0 is x. And writing that in a more familiar way, x has to be less than or equal to 0. Well, wait a minute here. I'm saying here this says x can be 2, but this is saying x can't be 2. Well, this is where the and comes in. If this says x can't be 2, then it can't be 2. I don't care what all the other conditions say. If one of them says x can't be 2, x can't be 2 in any of them. So, what do we have? If x can't be 2, then x has to be less than 2. That's our only option because we can't have x be equal to 2. x can't be greater than 2 because of this. If x is greater than 2, then we're going to run into trouble with taking square roots of a negative. That's what this work showed us. So this is our answer. And for those who prefer interval notation, stop hating yourselves and get with a simpler notation. But if you prefer to hate yourself, then that's the notation you're going to want to use. Not an easy concept.